Hi, my name is Alex. I'm another third year medical student studying medicine here at UEA. I'm going to be narrating this talk, which aims to talk through the application process for medicine, the type of things that you need to be thinking about and doing in this application process. And we're also going to run through a couple of activities to get you thinking. I really hope this helps. The medical school application process is notoriously hard and therefore this session has been made in order to help demystify the process and help you along in applying to medicine. In particular, this session aims to provide you with the information you need to make an application to study medicine, highlight the key skills required to be a good medical student and even more importantly, a good doctor. I'll draw your attention to helpful resources and run through a couple of in-class activities that you might find helpful when starting your application. There are multiple hurdles that you need to jump through when applying to medicine. So now we're going to talk through the timeline of the application process. Here is an overview of the timeline of the application process. Firstly, you need to decide on medicine. Why do you want to study medicine? And make sure that it's not someone else who is coercing you into this decision because it's a difficult course and you really need to have the motivation yourself to study it. Once you've done that, you then need to look at the attributes of a good medical student and doctor and consider how these match up to your own personal attributes. Once you've done that, you need to start thinking about carrying out work experience and volunteering. Later on in this talk, we will go through what sort of thing counts and what to do. Then you need to look at the different medical schools and look at the ones that you like the look of, but also ensuring that you meet the criteria of the medical schools that you like the look of. Then it's moving on to doing the application tests, such as the UK CAT and then the BMAT if your medical school of choice requires this. Then you need to start writing your personal statement and applying on UCAS, taking note that the application process for medicine on UCAS deadline is the middle of October, which is much earlier than for most of the other courses. Then, if you're lucky, you'll be invited to medicine interview. So before this, you need to start preparing for these interviews. And then after that, it all counts on your A-level or equivalent results, and then starting medical school if all goes well. One of the most important steps in the medicine application process is ensuring you meet the entrance criteria of all the schools you're applying to. Not only is the application process different to all other courses, the application requirements also vary between each university. You have to make sure that you meet the requirements of all the schools you're applying to, because if not, you'll be rejected straight away and this will be a waste of a precious application, as you only have four application choices, unlike all other courses where you have five on UCAS. There's a tool called the Medic Portal Medical School Comparison Table, where you can insert all of the schools that you are looking at and compare the requirements for GCSEs, for A-levels and equivalents such as Scottish Hires and BTECs, and also look at the entrance test that they require, either the UK CAT or the BMAT. You then need to look whether you meet this criteria, both for GCSEs, A-levels and equivalent, and only consider the schools that you meet the requirements for. Whilst it's really important that you make sure that you have the attributes that the medical school is looking for, it's also really important that you consider what you want from a medical school. After all, you're going to be there for five, maybe six years, and therefore you need to be somewhere that you are happy to learn and live. So for example, things to consider include, do you want a more campus-based uni, or do you want maybe a more city-based uni? Would you prefer to do two years of science before you then see patients, or would you like to see patients from the outset? In which case, a more PBL, integrase-based um, course may be better for you. Also, you need to consider whether you have any contextual criteria that may mean that you may be eligible for a gateway year, which has slightly lower entrance requirements and an extra year of study. Let's take UEA as an example. So UEA is a campus-based university. It offers both the traditional five-year course, but also offers the six-year course with a gateway year that if you meet contextual criteria, you can possibly apply for. At UEA, we have the opportunity to intercalate, which means a year that we can take away from our medicine studies to go and study something completely different. And we have the opportunity to do this both here at UEA and at medical schools across the country. But unlike other medical schools, this intercalation isn't compulsory. 
Also, we have a PBL integrated course. This means that we learn both the anatomy, the physiology, the pathophysiology, the pharmacology, etc. of the different systems all at once in a PBL system. And we also start clinical contact from day one. In addition, our anatomy teaching is cadaveric based teaching. This means that we use cadaveric specimens to learn anatomy rather than other medical schools where they use prosections or just anatomy models. So let's have a look at the entry requirements for UEA's traditional five-year course. So firstly, let's look at GCSEs. So UEA requires six GCSEs at grade seven or A or above, including maths and science subjects. They also require English language at at least a grade six or a B. Then for A-levels, they require three A's, including biology, human biology or chemistry. In addition, for other alternatives, such as the International Baccalaureate, they require 36 points. Uh, and on their website, they also cover things like the Scottish Hires and all other alternative qualifications. It's also noted that all applicants must have completed the UCAT in the year that they are applying. UEA also offers Medicine with a Gateway Year, which is a six year course that requires slightly lower entrance requirements if the candidate fulfills certain contextual criteria. The details of these contextual criteria you can find on UEA's website. So for this course, applicants are required to have at least BBB or ABC in certain A-level subjects. In the International Baccalaureate, 32 points. And for GCSEs, they are required to have six GCSEs, at least a grade B or a grade six, including English language, maths, and then certain sciences. Just like this five year course, they must have completed the UCAT in the year that they are applying. It is really important that if you are thinking about applying to this course, that the, you meet the additional entry requirements. So in summary, so far we have covered the application process to medicine timeline, the different entry requirements for different medical schools and where to find out this information. Then we've looked at what you perhaps may want from a university and medical school. And then we've taken UEA as an example, looking at the different entry requirements, both for the five year and six year course. Now we will start our first in-class activity. This is a quick in-class activity to get you thinking about the different entry requirements and how you're going to fulfill these. So take a couple of minutes just thinking about and jotting down what GCSEs you have and what grades you've attained in them or which grades have you been predicted and identify any GCSEs that you may need to retake so that you have the proper entry requirements. Then write down the A-levels or equivalent qualifications that you have and what grades you have predicted in these. Then you can identify where you need to work, um, perhaps harder to, in order to achieve the entry requirements for the medical schools that you want to apply to. And then jot down any experience you have so far, such as a part-time job, volunteering, hobbies, etc. So all these things can act as a prompt when you come to write your personal statement. Unlike other courses, which only have academic entrance requirements, medical schools also have to check that you have the qualities to develop you into a good doctor. Medical schools want students who have commitment, perseverance, initiative, concern for others and the ability to communicate. Obviously, each different medical school will have slightly different things they are asking for, but these are the types of things that they would like. This leads us on to our second in-class activity. As a medical student or a prospective medical student, you should be able to demonstrate a variety of things. A couple of things that you should be able to demonstrate are your motivation to study medicine and that you have a strong resolve to do so, academic ability, but even more importantly, the personal qualities that will make you a good doctor. These include being able to work in a team, being empathetic and caring, being able to treat other people with respect. To try and help you identify which qualities you possess and which ones you perhaps need to develop in this year or so as you're applying to study medicine, we've put together a checklist of what makes a good doctor. In this activity, tick the qualities that you think you possess and write down some examples of where you've shown these qualities. And then in the qualities where you're not so sure, perhaps put not yet. And this identifies the areas that you perhaps need to work on. You don't need to be able to do all these things to be a good medical student. It's just important to know your strengths and weaknesses. 
This tool will be really helpful when it comes to writing your personal statement and coming to interview. So hopefully in activity two, you have identified both your strengths and also perhaps some qualities that you need to develop. Work experience is a really good opportunity to develop the skills that you perhaps aren't so confident you have. Now we will talk about work experience and the different things you need and perhaps some ideas to get you started. So why is work experience important? Work experience is an essential part of the medicine application process. Without some form of work experience, the medical schools will not accept you. Medical schools need to know that you know what a career in medicine involves. Also, you need to gain an insight into whether medicine would be a good career path for you. Whilst work experience can't completely tell you this, it does give you a really good idea of whether you would be comfortable in a healthcare setting and if it's something you're interested in. Also, leading on from what we've just said, work experience is an opportunity to develop key skills needed to be a good medical student and doctor. And you can use examples from your work experience in your personal statement and to talk about that interview. So we've just told you that work experience is imperative to a medical school application. Therefore, you're probably thinking, what counts as work experience? So there's various things that count as work experience and medical schools know that, especially in the COVID era, it's difficult to get into hospitals or healthcare settings. Therefore, you have to think outside the box. So the different types of work experience you could do are, so the usual healthcare setting things such as shadowing in a GP practice, going to a hospital, perhaps going to a hospice and volunteering there over a long period of time or working in a care home but also anything where you have contact with people and something that you're showing either a long-term uh, commitment to in volunteering or something where you're learning something medical counts so something where you're working as people include a charity shop or working in a restaurant working in any part-time job where people are involved working at brownies or scouts or lifeguarding or volunteering for St John's Ambulance or even a school. What's really important to know with work experiences, it's not what you do, but it's what you learn from it. And not only do you need to know what the healthcare setting is like, but medical schools also want to see that you've committed yourself to something long term. So really try and aim to do volunteering lasting at least three months. So it's all well and good doing work experience, but what you need to understand is how to gain the most out of this. So the most important thing with medical school, as I've just said, is not what work experience you've done. It doesn't matter if you've shadowed a doctor. It's not about how many consultants or how many doctors you can follow and shadow. The medical schools aren't so bothered about that. What they want to know is what did you learn? So, for example, they would much prefer you talk about a time where you were volunteering or you were shadowing a nurse or shadowing a doctor, but then you really learned that actually working in a team, in the multidisciplinary team, was really important and how that impacted healthcare and brought about better outcomes for the patient than just listing off a reel of different things that you've done. So one of the ways to make the most out of medical school um, work experience is to write a reflective diary. Write down what you've seen but then what have you learnt and how is that going to impact you going forward. So if you take anything away from this presentation is the most important thing to do in your application is to reflect. Reflect, reflect, reflect. That's what I was always told in work experience. Keep that reflective diary and you will thank yourself so much later when it comes to both interviews and writing your personal statements. And the medical schools will really, really like the fact that you've talk talked about what you learned from something, not just reeling off what you've done. That means so much more to them and shows your insight. The COVID-19 pandemic has made finding in-person work experience even harder. Therefore, it's really important for me to point out that medical schools accept virtual work experience. So there's lots of things online, such as this Brighton and Sussex Medical School Virtual Work Experience Package, where you can do this free online course where you get to observe doctors and other healthcare professionals within your own home over your computer or your tablet, etc. Um, 
and the medical schools do recognise this as work experience. So this is a really, really good place to start if you're struggling to get with in-person work experience. Once you have ensured that you have all the entry requirements, that you've done the work experience and you've also done the application test, either the UCAT or the BMAT, depending on what your university requires, it will then be time to apply on UCAS. So this requires entering the medical schools, the four medical schools that you want to apply to, and then choosing a fifth non-medical choice, and then writing your personal statement. So all the things that we've talked about so far, such as the work experience that you've done, the qualities that you possess, the volunteering, etc., will really come into play now. So like I've said many, many times before, in your personal statement, this is your opportunity to show off what you've learnt um, from what you've done. So make sure in your personal statement you use the format of what you've done and then always following it up with what you've learnt from it. It's important you talk about work experience, volunteering, hobbies, your reason for wanting to study medicine and anything else that you think would add to your personal statement. After jumping through all the hoops that we've discussed so far, if you're lucky enough and your application is strong enough, you will be invited to interview. So now you need to think about preparing for interviews. I would recommend starting to do this around kind of October time of the year that you've applied after you've sent in your UCAS application. So a couple of really helpful resources are the Medic Portal interview preparation questions, where they provide lots and lots of free interview questions where you can think about what you would respond if you were asked this in interview. Here is another helpful interview preparation website. This is the Medical School Council Preparing for Medical School Interview. Again, this is a free resource that you can use to help prepare for interviews. The most important thing to do is to practice these questions with someone else. Ask a parent or a friend to ask you these questions and to try and emulate the pressure and the situation that you will be in during the interview. Hopefully this presentation has given you a good introduction to the medicine application process. In this activity, we advise you to write down some of the things that you think you need to research further from this presentation. So this has given you an overview, but now jot down what you think you really need to find out. You can come back to this and use this as a reference guide throughout your application. So this brings us to the end of our guide of how to apply to medical school. Thank you so much for listening and taking part in the activities that we have provided for you. We wish you all the luck in your application and hope to see you here soon.